to order our annual meeting, I mean our monthly meeting. Uh, could I have a second? Do we need a second that? Second. And uh, call a roll, Paul Carlo. Open Here. meeting. Here. Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Roach says aye, and Commissioner uh, Reagan, aye. Aye. So we open this meeting. Uh, we will do the. And I'm here meeting. as well, Dennis Winter. Thank Hello. You. Hello. Thank you, Dennis. We hear you. We're no, thanks for blowing me out. So welcome to the uh, annual budget meeting hearing, and uh, I will uh, make a motion to open the uh, annual budget meeting hearing. I'll second it. It'll be seconded by, and we'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Carlo? Aye. Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Roach is aye. Commissioner Winter? Aye. Very good, so we open the meeting. So good evening, tonight's agenda We'll begin with our budget hearing for the East Chester Fire District's 2021 operating budgets. I will now ask our district treasurer, Jamie Headstrom, to give an overview of the budget briefly and make any related remarks before opening up the floor to the public. Thank you. Um, so for approval tonight is our um, 2021 budget for the East Chester Fire District. Um, at our September 26th meeting, we adopted a proposed budget with a 0% tax increase, um, a planning to appropriate funds of approximately $920,000 um, to cover those expenses that we know are increasing. Um, in the time since that meeting, uh, I've met with certain commissioners on the board, uh, and what we've gone through is we've, we've sort of gone through some of the line items to determine uh, where we might want to decrease or increase um, specific allocations to line items. Um, as the budget stands right now, there was no change to either the tax increase or the appropriated funds. Um, like I said, all we really did since then was uh, move around some of the line items. I would say the most notable of which is that we increased the firefighter overtime line um, to be, you know, more... Uh, transparent, more in line with our typical overtime expenditures, so that hopefully, you know, next year, unlike this year where we're about to talk about transfers, uh, we have, you know, more in that line item, and we were able to do that by sort of sharpening our pencils and looking at some of the other line items where there might have been room. So again, the budget looks slightly different from what was presented, uh, was adopted as the proposed budget. Uh, however, the tax increase is still 0%, and the appropriated funds is still estimated to be about $920,000. Uh, it was posted on our website, and it was uh, provided to the town, so if anyone, um, you know, hopefully the public had a chance to look at it, and if they have any questions, I think, unless there's board comments, we, you know, we can open it up to the, to the public. Jamie, is last year's budget still up there or not? Uh, no, it's not. But it is, if you look at this budget, it's, it's a year-to-year -year comparison. I see, okay. So when you pull up this budget, you will see that. Okay, uh, as we, you know, we keep talking about upgrading our website and we'd have more ability to do things like that where we could leave up budgets, financial statements, all that, but we don't have that current. Thank you. Very good. Good, okay. All right, so then uh, any comments from the public? Please. Good evening, uh, Ray Rooney, Shining Place. I'd like to start off uh, as an apology to the, uh, the board and the fire commissioners. Uh, the last meeting, I got quite vocal, uh, a little bit too passionate, I'll say. Uh, so my sincerest apologies if I uh, came across insulting in any way. It was not meant to be. It was just more the, um, the frustration of uh, what was presented. So, uh, but. Going on to tonight's budget meeting, I do have some questions with regard to that, and I don't know whether the commissioners or the treasurer, who the appropriate person or the chief is, so if you don't mind, uh, patiently have a couple of questions just to go through. Um, on the appropriate fund balance, we're showing $922,971.25. I believe at the last meeting, 
during the discussion about buyouts and overtime and things of that nature, there was a dollar figure that was thrown out uh, during the, the board discussion of approximately $2 million to $2.5 million of uh, money that was available to utilize, whether it was for repair of firehouses or whether it was a purchase of fire apparatus or what is the overtime. Is that number someplace in this budget? Jamie, do you want to take it? I mean, yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. You can, yeah. Yeah, sure. You. Um, no, that number would be. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to get some. Why don't you come up here? Want to come up here? Go. What if, what if, Jamie, what if I put this through here? Can I put this through here for Jamie? You're making it's it easier. harder. Just go it's to the podium. Easier. It's easier for both these guys. Yes, yeah, so just stay six feet apart and you can certainly answer the question. Um, so no, you won't, you won't see that number in the budget. The budget is just an income statement. It's just a summary of what we expect to bring in and then how we expect to spend it. Um, what we'll have at the end of the year is really a balance sheet item. So you're not going to see that in here. We do, I do track that separately. So what I look at is you know, our, what we have in the bank versus what our monthly expenditures are. And that's how we come out to that estimated amount that we'll have available to us at the end of the year after um, we account for our taxes for the, our, our spending for the beginning of 2021. So no, you will not see that as part of the budget. So because it's not in the budget, and uh, I will say I, I reviewed the, the minutes for the past year, and there's been a lot of discussion between the five members of the board of things that get fixed, things are um, handicap accessible, things are in repair, so many different things, and we don't show that accountability in our budget that we're either going to take from our savings account, I'll call it a savings account, Okay, or we're going to spend it as a capital going forward. So how do we address each one of your gentlemen's concerns to be dip into that money, and when do we actually talk about dipping into that money and not taking it out of a budget or as a tax levy? Um, so I think there's a couple of things. That one would be putting together a capital plan, um, which we don't have at this moment. Um, but that would be one way to do it so we, we could show, you know, how we plan, you know, what <coughs> capital expenditures we need to make, what repairs need to be made. Um, that's, that's one way to do it. Otherwise, I mean, it, if you looked at our financials, that would be another place where we could show, you know, what we were uh, planning to use that money for. So that's where you're going to see our fund balance and then what it's earmarked for. Um, but that, those would really be, uh, you know, the two places. Otherwise, probably a capital plan would be the best uh, way to show that. Yeah. Um, over the last, I would say, three years, there's definitely been a push by some members of the board to execute a CIP, a capital improvement plan, or, or a capital budget, depending on how you look at it. Uh, the difficult issue with that has been that this district is riddled with spur the moment repairs and otherwise that have kind of taken our attention away from putting that budget together but the focus has never changed so as you know we've put a new roof on chester heights we've done the exterior we're working on the interior now we've had four new fire trucks delivered in the last three years so is it better accounting principles to have a capital improvement budget to be able to have that transparency hundred percent we need to do that however we have taken these surplus monies or fund balances depending on how you like to call them and use them for those types of purchases and repairs uh, we are hopeful that in the next year we'll be able to provide an accurate capital budget but right now these monies until they're actually accounted for and real do not exist until january 1 2021 and then we'll see what we can do with them and how we can reinvest them into the community and i know the board has really tried to stick to that by reinvesting the money that we are perhaps keeping or not spending, especially in this last year due to COVID and other reasons, and reinvesting that back into the community, which is why this board has felt so strongly about presenting a 0% budget. Because that $922,000 that we are filling is your money and our money as residents mm -hmm. that we did not spend. Right. So that is what we are doing to help in this scenario, but it's a valid question and eventually we'll get it. Is that $922,000 that we're showing in here, 
Is that also in addition to the two and a half million that was discussed at the this last meeting? This is part of that. Oh, so part it's part of, of it. So it's not two and a half plus 922. No, it's part of okay. whatever money is left over from this operating year is getting reinvested to the next year. Okay, New York State Retirement System, uh, uh, line item. Uh, $2,200,000 in 2020 and then $2,720,000 for, for 21. Almost a 24% increase mm -hmm. in the retirement. Now, from what I remember, that's actually a number given by the state. We don't create that number. Right. Okay, so that's, now. That's out of our hands. Is there someone here that can explain for the public that's watching tonight what would cause that increase? Is it because we had more people retire this year and they're projecting what our cost value is? Um, yes, so that, uh, that number is set by the retirement system. Um, they're, so every year they set our contribution rate. So we have members at different tiers, um, and depending on the tier, there's a different contribution rate. So tier two, which is the majority of our members, um, tier two members are not required to contribute. We contribute fully on their behalf. And then for tiers five and six, that changed over time. Tier six now does contribute up to 6% for the life of their employment. So we get a statement from the retirement system that will show us uh, this, the salaries for each tier and the contribution rate that the, the state has set for the coming year. That rate we have no control over. So New York State's, their justification this year was twofold. Now remember, their year ends in March. So they're on a different, they're on a fiscal year. So their justification was two things. One was basically that the market was tanking um, and they needed to make up the differences uh, because you know, New York State, while it's one of the you know, best funded pension plans, it's not fully funded. So they needed to make up the difference and they said they also studied, uh, you know, they had their actuaries go back through and it was based on the fact that People are retiring at much higher pensions than anticipated, and people are living much longer than anticipated. So what it seems like happened, and we've seen the rates fluctuate. You know, I'm only here four years, but you, you see them fluctuate, but never to this extent. Um, I think what they did was, it, this was sort of a good time for them to reevaluate, um, and, you know, not just from the market, but like, again, a broader picture of they're looking at the future funding of the pension system. So again, it's, it's out of our control. It's just salaries. Well, obviously, the salaries are in, are in our control, but it's salaries times the rate set by the but it's state. A number given by the state. But it's a number given by the state. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the ugly elephant in the room, the overtime budget for, for, for the firemen. Um, it was $500,000 previous year. We usually spend on average somewhere between six and seven twenty uh, over the past. And now that was the question I wanted to know: is how many years have we been averaging that seven hundred thousand dollar number on overtime? Does anybody know that? It's more. I, Jamie did a. It's more than that, but I think the average was closer to higher seven hundreds. Okay, but how, you, over you know, a, like two years, three years, five that, years, seven years? That was, Ray, that was a decade that we looked at. A decade? Yeah, over a decade. Okay. Yes. And, the, and the reason I ask that question is because reviewing the, the previous year's minutes of the entire board's actions and the discussion to come up with replenishment for the, the chief's manpower and the cost effectiveness from the senior firefighter to the rookie firefighter, okay, and trying to move the list and trying to be progressive or whatever. And we had a whole bunch of votes that we abstained from voting and we got stuck in the mud. So my question is, because we've been stuck in the mud, okay, we keep spending overtime to fill a minimum manning slot. Okay? And for the public that may not understand that, we, we put out 14 firefighters, including bosses, every tour. Okay? And we've been doing it now, if you're, if you're correct, in seven, eight, nine, ten years, we've been stuck, okay? The question, and it goes back to the previous one on the pension system is that now we're also, we have all these senior firefighters that are still here, okay, because we're paying a lot of overtime, okay? And we're trying to now try to, how do we make the chief have a functioning fire unit, dependable unit, and not backfilling uh, vacations, personal days off, or, or uh, long-term sick, because he doesn't even have one person or two person over quota to fill that to eliminate 
the overtime. So my question is, when do we try to get the overtime budget back down, okay, by hiring the sufficient amount of staffing people so he can do his job? It's an interesting question. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know if there actually is a way to eliminate, I mean, as long as you have people who are at work and people who have paid time off, you will need people to cover them. So if you add more people to the list as far as being regular employees, you also add the number of days that they get paid time off. No, but you're, so, add, you're adding, let's say he has four working groups, mm -hmm. okay? If you're, if you're able to add a vacation person per each group, uh -huh. okay? So that come your, your June, July, August, when a, a lot more firefighters may want to take vacation, because I'm sure if I looked at the January, February, March vacation picks, everybody was showing up to work, okay? And the problem is, and again, that may be a union thing, I don't know, it's, you know, I worked for a different union for many, many years, okay? But the bottom line is that there must be some sort of fiscal study to figure out how we give him sufficient manpower every day where he doesn't have to go out and hire. Because at the end, when the, the, the firefighters who are making a wonderful salary, okay, the top salary I think in, in uh, uh, the September meeting was, was put up around $192,000 with benefits and overtime. That's a lot of money for putting out five, six fires a year. Most of their calls are, are EMS jobs there or whatever. Okay, so it's a lot of money and I'm just trying to say is how do we make it a fair number so we actually know what the dollar amount should be? Right. I hear what you're saying. I don't know if that answer is coming tonight. I think okay. that's what the fire board is supposed to be trying to work on. And obviously, if anyone's interested in trying to get the answer, they should run for fire, fire board. That's number one. They number two. The meeting. How's that? <laughs> number two, um, I think that uh, there's a valid concern. I think we always have to look at our management and make sure that they're, first of all, doing everything they can to make sure that they're backfilling within our budget. So if that's not happening, and I, and I agree. Um, then that's another conversation. But just to go back to your question about the budget and the overtime, this board and this district has had a nasty habit for too long of not, and I'm not you know, innocent from this because I've passed budgets for the last three years, so I've been here. Uh, this board has not provided the transparency that it really should have in the overtime line in this budget. And I know that it's raising a lot of questions and that's why it hasn't been transparent. Because to avoid these types of questions, the amount of money that is in the overtime line is there now to properly represent how much it costs right now or for the last 10 years or so to run overtime. It's not there so that we can then on top of it have to transfer money thereafter like this board's been doing. Keeping the overtime budget at $500,000 per year when we're spending more than that on average every year is a faux pas at the very least. And we've corrected that. And I appreciate the comments and, and it's good that it's transparent. So that's where it should be. That's how much it takes to run the fire department right now. That's what you and me as the residents should know. Okay. Uh, looking down here. Uh, can I make a comment? I'd like to make a comment. It's Dennis Winter. Please. One, I don't know who, uh, I don't know the speaker's name speaking, and I appreciate your comments. But I will, but I, I think you need to premise the conversation as to if you need to put, to cover a 24 hour shift, what is the cheapest way to cover that 24 hour shift? Is it hiring a full time employee who only has to work 75 days a year, and then you have to give them all the benefits that are defined in the CBA? Or is it better to bring in people in overtime and just pay them the hourly rate for that shift on overtime? So if you do that math, and I welcome you to do that math, I will venture to say that it's probably cheaper to pay the overtime and not to, um, and, and not to go the other way and hire full-time employees. All right, Commissioner. As far as the overtime budget changing year over year um, and not being accounted for, a lot of the overtime that's generated is because people get sick, they get hurt, they get long-term injury, which are unpredictable in the beginning of the year. And as far as management should manage things better, people should understand there is only one management person in the whole fire department, and that's the chief. Underneath the chief are six, cap six captains, 
Five of them are line captains. Commissioner, Those five line like, captains are members of the same union as the firemen and the lieutenants. So you have to understand the management is really the chief. Under him is all members of the same union, the same bargaining unit. So if you're going to expect your captains to police or manage your overtime, then you have to restructure your CBA. That's as simple as that. All right, uh, just to give you a different spin on that, okay? When, when you increase the overtime for each of the senior people, okay, that increase, and I don't know whether you guys averaged the last best year or the last... I'm having last a very difficult time. Let me, the, sir. The, the, the communications is weak. I have a hard time hearing. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try to speak slower and louder so you can understand me. At the end of the day... No, it's when, not when, you. It's the, it's the sound system we're dealing with. Okay, when, when you increase the overtime, and, and most of the overtime is getting geared towards the senior people because they have first shot at that, okay? At the end of the day, their increased pension, okay, goes into the state system, which comes back from the actuaries, which causes your increase to go up 24% on the projection of what it's going to cost to reimburse that person. So, um, secondly, when, when you look at the chief, and I'm glad you brought that issue up, the chief is the sole manager or whatever, and this fire department used to have an assistant chief. You used to have someone that could give that person a hand. They ran four captains. They had no lieutenants, but they had an assistant chief who was the second in command. So when the chief took off on vacation, someone could make decisions. So maybe you want to consider, because there's no line in the budget line over here to put an assistant chief on the books over here. Maybe you want to give this man a hand doing his job. Yeah, I, would, I think, you know, the other option is, I don't know what you do or how much time you have, but on December, there's an election, and you can get your petition out there and run for fire commissioner, and having somebody who is insightful to you would be very helpful. So you're welcome to give it a shot. Thank you, sir. Thank you for concern. Uh, one uh, thing, uh, and this may be go for the chief. Uh, reviewing the, the past year or whatever, we added 36 brand new radios because we went to a new radio system, and I see the radio budget's gone up by $100,000. Are we looking to build out the remaining ones so every firefighter has his own radio? Yeah, I believe it'll be part of the chief's report, right? We talked about it at our last meeting. These are gonna be the new VHF, right? Next year's budget was to replace the UHF system with the operations, I guess the microphone. <laughs> that would be good, yes. <laughs> we don't wanna lose the footage. There was $100,000 or $140,000 for last year for radios. Some of those were replacing portable radios which I think the cost was around like 80 or 100,000. And then we upgraded our operations UHF radio system. That's how we talk to the dispatchers, through tie lines, through the radios. At Lawrence Hospital, we have a, a receiver. Garth Road, we have a receiver. Two firehouses, we have receivers. So there's throughout the uh, district, there's radio receivers. We upgraded all those uh, tie lines and the radio equipment last year. This year for 2021, the current budget we're talking about, the upgrade is for the VHF radios. That's our dispatch radios. That was installed about 18 years ago. The physical radios are no longer serviced by Motorola. If they break down, they say you gotta buy a new one. So this is to replace the radios in each firehouse, including the main transmitter at headquarters, including all the wiring to all the speakers throughout each firehouse, and that's probably gonna be the most expensive part, the labor to hire electricians, prevailing wage to run the wires, and um, to replace all the equipment. So that's this year's money, uh, the $100,000 for the VHF, the receiving uh, tones that we get from the county. And if I could just address one thing on the overtime, each group does have 14 people on a shift, one captain, two lieutenants, and 11 firefighters. In addition, each group has three relief firefighters when we're at full staffing. So two firefighters can be on vacation, one firefighter can be on a float day, which is like a personal day. So there is coverage when we have full staffing to cover the normal vacations and days off for the firefighters. As Commissioner Rabin said, uh, you, or Commissioner uh, Winter, you can't anticipate how many guys are going to get hurt, either on duty or off duty, and be out of work for two years. That's hard to predict. So those are the ones that create, and the normal sick leave when somebody gets the flu or something, um, those are the ones that create overtime. Right now we're short six people. We've hired three, so we have three people in the academy. When they graduate, we'll still be short three people uh, due to recent retirements. Um, so, so that's that. There are extra people, in, not extra, 
There are additional members in each group to cover vacations and personal days. Okay. And, and I just want to you know, thank the chief because I, I am familiar that they, they have been short running. They've been short before he became chief. Okay. Um, but my point was that if right now anybody retires next year, right now he's three in a hole, okay, without anybody retiring, and we've got half the department has at least 25 years on the job, okay? And all I'm trying to say is the board has to try to come together as five people to put the hiring back out there so the person can actually have a full vacation pick. So each of his line items are, are done. Ray. Um, yes, sir. Ray, may I say something? Yeah. As luck would have it, we now have five commissioners here tonight, and minimally three of them can vote on a buyout, bring that, make that motion again, okay. and with a little luck, we can do that and actually bring um, those numbers down. That was my next question. Thank oh, you. Fine. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. On the buyout, and I don't know whether anybody, anyone knows the answer on this. Um, I think Commissioner Raven had, had made the, uh, the motion or whatever two meetings ago where offering $1,000 per year for, for, the, for the firefighters. I mean, we have some people here with, with 34, 35, 36 years on the job, and, you know, that's $36,000 or whatever. Is that number pensionable? No. It's not. Lump sum is not pensionable. No. Okay. Thank you. Again, uh, for those who uh, had the pleasure of my audience last month, I do apologize I, or whatever. I'd just like to make a comment. I heard, as luck would have it, we have five commissioners. The last meeting was scheduled on a Saturday. Commissioner Carlo and myself, Dennis Winter, made it extremely clear we would not be attending a Saturday meeting. And two, not attending an in-person meeting because COVID is still in the community. We made that clear to the board repeatedly, yet they chose to, to hold a Saturday meeting. So it's not as luck would have it. That was more by design by the three commissioners. Can Thank I, you. Can I answer that, Dennis? You, Dennis? Hello? Well, you can answer. Well, so anyway, I, I would like Dennis to hear this. Dennis and Commissioner Winter, or Chairman Winter, and Commissioner Carlo could have shown up on Saturday electronically. Thank you. And thank you for giving me the time to. Uh, you're speak. welcome, and thank you. We appreciate it. Um, any board comments about the board? Any other comments? No. From the public? I'll, I'll just say um, <clears throat> this is, uh, I think this is the right move for the coming year. I think that in light of our ability to do so, being able to provide the taxpayers with a 0% increase is one that I am, I feel that we should feel fortunate to be able to provide them when so many other municipalities are looking to make super, super cuts in 2021, especially due to down revenue. Now, of course, the fire district doesn't really collect revenue outside of our of our taxes and perhaps some interest on some accounts, unlike a town or a village. But there is going to be a lot of belt tightening going on in the municipalities throughout the next year, whether it be the town of East Chester, the village of Bronxville, the village of Tucko. So if we are able to provide some support to our residents by doing this, I think it's a good thing. I think this is certainly a uh, notion that our chief, who has already understood that, our treasurer, our, our paid men and women of the department, we will still be doing a little bit of belt tightening in the coming year as well to make sure that we are able to provide the top-notch fire service that we always do at the most affordable price. And we will have to make a few sacrifices this year, not in safety, but maybe in some wants, but we'll always provide the needs. And I, I thank the board members, uh, Jamie, the chief, everyone involved in, in another year in wrapping this up. And I am, I am myself am prepared to close the public hearing as soon as the board is. So that's Can I make a comment? Please. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would propose we raise the budget by 2.37%, the original budget. Now, I know that's probably going to be shot down, but I think by going with a flat budget when your expenses went up by $900,000 is probably not doing a great service, and I'll tell you why. The, if you're a senior Dennis, citizen Dennis, in town without Dennis, children in the school... Dennis, excuse me one second. Uh, Jamie, can we increase the budget at this point legally? Um, yes. Yes, we can. We can? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, so, we, and here's, here's my logic. If you're a senior citizen in town, um, it's important to you to have a very strong fire service. Now, you have an extremely strong volunteer ambulance corps, and, but it's also good to have an extremely good fire department because it's one of the few services you get. So your taxes you spend on fire taxes are well-spent taxes. Um, your school money is not so well-spent if you don't have kids in the school. It whole, keeps your home values high, but you're not getting a day-to-day -day benefit out of it. And if you have kids in the school, and there's maybe 1,800 people in the Bronxville school, I think you want a strong fire department, or the East Chester School, or Cottle School, or Lawrence Hospital. And so to come up with a two and three, Jamie came up with two and three eighths, or 2.375 increase. And that was before we found out New York State had a 25% increase in the pension system. I'm rounding off, and maybe it was 22, but it was that kind of number. So I think we should do 2.37%. Now, that number will be shot down by some of the other board members, so, but that's my thoughts. That's fine. Uh, I will say this, the 2.37% increase is not going to make our firefighters do their job any better. Or it's strong. not going to take anything or away strong. from them or sure stronger. Strong. It's not going to change your fire protection. It's not going to eliminate any kind of coverage that we're currently doing. Is it great to go ahead and have another million dollars on top of the budget? Sure. A 2.3% is basically us not using the money you've already given us and taking it from you and keeping the money we already have for you and putting it in our coffers. It's not really changing the budget okay. that much. It's holding on to it. Right? It's not. So it's not really a change. So in three 2. years, 3%. you won't be closing firehouses. Okay. Well, we're years, not we're closing not firehouses, firehouses as it is right it now. Down. No, we're okay. not closing firehouses because we increased, we increased and put it in the budget what the overtime really is. So we won't have to say to the firefighters, okay, here's five hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Well we'll see you in April and, and give you another two fifty, which is what happened this year. That's correct. We're not gonna do that. That's We're correct. telling the public it looks on paper, Ray, that we increased it to eight hundred, but that's really where it's been at. It just hasn't hit the paper and uh, you know, maybe that's on us for uh, Residents, meaning um, I'm also a resident, on me for not, you know, noticing that. But that's what it is. And Jamie did a. Uh, I asked Jamie to do to look at it for a decade, and it's much higher than that. In all fairness to the firefighters, it should be higher, and the and the public should know what the actual number is. Just another thing: the overtime is not only sick time, which is you know been bandied about even by myself. But it's it covers a lot of other items, including training. So we're just being honest about it. And it's easy to say, hey, take another three percent to four percent, you know, and uh, we'll just leave it there just in case. But we rather do. You got guys, three guys here who who are looking to do the work, and we're going to do it for you. So if that's the end of the uh, public. Uh conversation uh, i'll read the resolution uh, we have to close the hearing oh okay so we'll close i make a motion to close the public hearing i'll second that motion we'll call the board uh commissioner keating Aye. commissioner carlo no you're not going to close the uh, budget meeting no i'm, I'm sorry i hear commissioner uh roach well you, the budget being closing yes i excuse me okay commissioner rabin Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Winter? Aye. All right, so we close the meeting, the budget meeting, and we will now read the resolution. Whereas the Board of Fire Commissioners of the East Chester Fire District and the Town of East Chester must adopt the budget for 2021 and estimate its fund balances in preparation for the annual fire district budget hearing and did so in preparation for its budget hearing and whereas the Board of Fire Commissioners of the East Chester Fire District and the Town of East Chester had held an annual fire district budget hearing with notice to the public on September 26, 2020, and whereas the Board of Fire Commissioners East Chester Fire District and the Town of East Chester has considered and proposed the budget and comments received on the proposed budgets on October 20, 2020, and said budget hearing, 
And whereas the Board of Fire Commissioners in the East Chester Fire District in the town of East Chester has determined that the financial needs of the fire district and the fire department for fiscal year 2021 can be supported by a budget that would comply with the real property tax cap established pursuant to Section 3C of the General Municipal Law and as proposed, the 2021 budget calls for a real property tax levy that will not exceed the real property tax cap. That's because it's zero percent. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Fire Commissioners of the East Chester Fire District and the Town of East Chester hereby approve the final budget for the East Chester Fire District for 2021, attached hereto and made part hereof in the amount of $18 million, $656,470.95, which includes a tax levy of $17,695,000 and $499.70. Uh, Roach will make a motion to vote on this. Can I have a second? And then uh, Commissioner Carlo. No. Commissioner Keating. Aye. Commissioner Roach is a aye. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. And Commissioner uh, Winter. No. Very good. The, the resolution passes, the budget has moved forward. All right, Thank so. You, Thank you, Jamie. No, we don't need to, uh, we already adjourned the uh, meeting? Yeah. Okay, so now we will return, we'll move to the regular meeting on um, business tonight. Treasurer's report. <laughs> The, the only thing for tonight is um, looking at the overtime transfers. Uh, you know, the board has expressed interest in uh, sort of making smaller transfers as we go. Um, so if that is still the intention of the board. Uh, to date, we have, we had $500,000 budgeted. We've made a $15,000 transfer. Um, to date through this week's payroll, which is pay 22. We've used $558,256.82, uh, which leaves um, a necessary transfer at this time of $43,256.82. Um, so, you know, historically, I did provide the board with uh, suggestions of transfers where we could take from various lines up to $200,000. Uh, I know the board has chosen to first start with the other overtime lines. So I am recommending a transfer for this evening, um, subject to you know the, where the board wants to go at this point. Do we want to do uh, another um, sort of smaller transfer to cover the forty-three thousand dollars from another overtime line, uh, or you know, alternative is there are certain line items we could take from, including the fire captain salary, the firefighter salary, and the hospital. Jamie, I'm having a hard time hearing you, but basically, are you requesting we move $200,000 to overtime uh, from various lines to overtime? Yeah, I'm, I'm still estimating at this point that that's what we'll need to get us through the remainder of the year. Um, so that is still proposed in the treasurer's report. However, you know, there's obviously other options available to the board if, if the board's preference is to continue to do the smaller transfers. Jimmy, what will we yeah, I would, what will we I would make a motion to, to move the two. Dennis, someone's talking, Dennis. Okay. What will we need to get okay. to next month? Say the second or third Saturday in November. Let's see. Uh, it looks like to get there, you you probably are going to need about seventy thousand in addition to the forty-three thousand. So you'd be looking at a hundred and ten. Again, there's a large piece of that that's an estimate based on sick time, which we can't predict. Um, however, we know how many days sick days will create over time. So that, you know, it, it is definitely an estimate. But looking at the, the chart that I was asked to uh, prepare, that's what I would say. You'd be looking at about 70 for that plus the 43 you've already used. Are you willing to do that? 110, 115. Might be a better uh, way of dealing with Sure. How about the uh, burn training? Has that been uh, scheduled? I was waiting for the county to give me dates, but I requested them yet. So we need to keep that money there for that, for sure. 
What's your suggestion? Um, I would suggest if, if that's something the board's considering doing, if we look at, I had recommended we could take 30,000 from fire captain salary, and again, that's related to, we did have a about four month period of time where we were short a captain and that generated about $35,000 of overtime. If you took that 30 plus the 75,000 out of firefighter salary, the 105,000, that was pretty good to get us through the, what was just suggested. I think it just cleaner. And again, firefighter salary, we were budgeted for additional firefighters for a good portion of the year. So maybe that's the correct. I'll make, I'll make a motion to move that 105. Okay. Sure. All right, Dennis and uh, Paul, did you hear that? Barely, not really. Okay, so, so right now we're going to move money, uh, a total of $105,000. Jamie will read the resolution to us. Uh, but it's basically going to come from firefighter salaries and captain salaries and going into overtime. I think that... Okay, now I want to mention something that people should be aware of. And it could affect the overtime between now and year end. And right now, the CDC has guidelines that say if a firefighter's family member tests positive for COVID, that firefighter still has to come to work. There's no quarantine provisions for first responders. I think it's somewhat insane, those guidelines. Um, and I think that first responders, if they have a family member who tests positive, should stay home. But that will increase the overtime budget. So I think the CDC's guidelines are ludicrous, as nicely as I can put it. And I think the chief should have latitude on overtime when he thinks that a family member, his kids are in school now, and the kids could come home with the virus. We're gonna require that fireman to come into work. It makes no sense. All right, we'll, we'll deal with that when it happens, Dennis. I would make a motion to move the $105,000 as, as you stated, and would look for a second. I will second that motion. Call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Carlo. Uh, no. Okay. Commissioner Keating. Aye. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Winter. I'd say no because I would have moved the whole 200 okay. and got it out of the Very good. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. And I'm sure that the chief will be able to follow whatever guidelines he needs in order to keep people here during COVID. You know that the safety of everybody is this so now is old hat the, now. Now it's the payment of bills. Uh, the board has reviewed this month's bills and warrants and makes a motion to pay them. Uh, our first set of warrants dated 10-16, totaling $656,000, A credit card bill dated 10-16, totaling $611.82 for a monthly total of Six hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars, four hundred seventy-eight cents, and twenty-five. Four hundred seventy-eight dollars and twenty-five cents. Could I? Uh, I will make a motion to pay those bills. Can I have a second? I'll second. So he voted no, because he goes, I just think we should have moved the whole two hundred thousand at once. So I vote no. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, fucking crazy. Yeah, we're gonna need it. Can, can you guys? Could, uh, could you put your, sir? We're hearing you. Could you put your phone on mute? Welcome. You're not hearing me. No. Well, I'm, we're I'm hearing somebody. Speaking. All right. So we're going to vote. We, 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 it's a little confusing, but Commissioner Carlo, do you vote to pay the bills? Aye. Commissioner Keating. Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Winter. I'll abstain. Okay. Receive the message. Deliver a message. Deliver message. New message. Chief's report. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening to everybody. Uh, as far as the CDC guidelines for when a family member or anybody that you've had close contact with for a prolonged period of time, uh, we are emergency responders, they're essential personnel. Uh, the CDC guidelines say they should wear a mask when they're at work, their health should be monitored, we take their temperature, we check them for symptoms, and that's done twice a tour. It's recommended at least every 12 hours, so at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. 
Uh, it's supposed to be documented in the watch books to, you know, anybody that's in that situation. And the guys have been good about letting me know. So, you know, I'm aware of who uh, has had close contact but is still asymptomatic. That's the key. As long as they're asymptomatic, they can come to work. If they have fever, cough, or any symptoms of COVID, we don't want them at work. You know, they should follow up with their doctor. Um, and they're supposed to do that for their tours um, for 14 days or until they get a negative COVID test. So we've been doing that all along since March. Um, and so fortunately, uh, we haven't had a large breakout of guys on duty, okay? Uh, so the monthly chief report for September 2020. Alarm total activity, 252 alarms. Nine of them were fire related. 118 EMS or rescue. And mutual aid was given two times, once to the city of New Rochelle and once to the city of Mount Vernon. Uh, since last month, uh, or since my last report, Tim Dalton has returned to work and uh, the maintenance mechanic and has provided a detailed maintenance report which was emailed to the board. I spoke to him about changing the format uh, he will uh, comply with that to mirror the uh, fire prevention reports. So that was addressed. Uh, vehicle maintenance continues through the use of uh, outside vendors. The new Pierce Ladder 16 has been placed in service. And it's currently running out of the shop at fire headquarters until the floor replacement project is completed at the Chester Heights Firehouse. Right now, Engine 27 is responding out of Tucko Station 2 with a lieutenant and one firefighter. That's reversed. Engine 27 used to have two firefighters. Ladder 16 had a lieutenant and a firefighter. So the lieutenant stayed in Tuckahoe when engine 27 was brought down there. Um, and so two firefighters, a captain and the captain's aide operate out of headquarters now with the ladder truck. <clears throat> uh, the new chief's vehicle has been placed in service as uh, the commissioners saw at the last meeting who attended. Um, and unfortunately, I got bad news today about Engine 29. It was out for its uh, service up at Ruscon. And while they were doing the maintenance on it, they found a cracked frame on the driver's side. Uh, so that's beyond the scope of what Ruscon can do to repair. It's going to have to go back to the factory. So we're waiting for the factory to give us you know, a time when we could bring it there and get an estimate on what the cost will be. Uh, I would assume it's going to be at least weeks and possibly months until that rig will be able to get put back in service. Um, there's a lot of uh, engine mounts and electrical wiring in that area, so I assume they're going to have to take it well, you know, pretty much apart to get to the frame where it's cracked. Uh, so not good news about engine 29, but we have engine 28 in service, the old American La France, and that's operating out of Bronxville and will be until such time that 29 comes back in service. And is engine 29 a new Pierce? Uh, it's a 2010 KME. Yeah. Okay. So it's 10 years old. So hopefully the frame is warranted for 10 years, but we'll find out when, uh, uh, when it goes to the factory. <coughs> uh, hey, so they know, do they know whether the crack was caused by the diesel? And diesels, or was it more cracked by improper lifting the out, you know, jacking up the, the truck? Sometimes if you improperly jack something, you can crack it. Any reasoning? Did anybody speculate why it cracked? Uh, Ruscon did not give a reason. Uh, they did provide pictures, which I emailed to the board. So um, we'll have to wait till the factory can take it apart and see uh, what maybe come up with the cause. Um, Fire prevention and code enforcement activities continue with uh, numerous plan reviews and inspections. The September fire report was emailed to the board. Excuse me. Um, this month, October, is fire prevention month, so I'd like to remind the residents to test their smoke detectors and CO detectors on a monthly basis. And also, if residents have a fire hydrant on their property, please try not to cover it up with piles of leaves. Uh, it happens all the time and it makes it very difficult for us when we get a fire and we can't locate the fire hydrants. If you have gardeners, just tell them not to cover up the, uh, the leaves. You know, they just go out there with their blowers and pile them up. So it is, uh, sometimes it's a problem. And normally uh, this time of year, we'd be doing all the fire safety demonstrations for the schools. Um, they've been postponed by the schools until the spring if possible at that time, COVID allows uh, in-person demonstrations. I spoke to Captain Pintaval about possibly producing a video 
of a fire safety demonstration that we could do for a couple different age groups and then put it on our uh, YouTube channel and then the schools could just click on that link to show the kids. <clears throat> uh, one member is still out on long-term absence and one member continues to work on restricted duty. The three candidates in the Career Fire Chiefs Academy are all doing well. Uh, last month I said we got the Lucas Street chest compression system. Uh, all the training has been completed and it's now in service in CAR 2102. Um, on 9-11, uh, myself and the department, uh, several members, on-duty and off-duty members, attended the East Chester 9-11 ceremony. And I just want to thank uh, all the members that attended, and it was a very nice service by the town of East Chester. <coughs> um, so I have a couple things I would ask the board to approve purchase of. Um, I could go over them if you have any questions, and I'll leave it up to the board to decide. Um, during the 2020 budget discussions, uh, we sat down with Commissioner Rabin and I uh, asked to uh, have a forcible entry door simulator uh, purchase, so money was put in the budget for it, the 2020 budget to purchase it. Um, so I got three proposals and the uh, lowest cost one uh, being delivered was $6,350 by East Coast Rescue Solutions. Uh, the second thing I would ask the board to approve is the annual ESS radio maintenance contract for $8,742.48. It was provided in my June report at the July 21st meeting. Uh, the board requested more time to review the proposal, so I asked the board to approve that proposal tonight. Uh, the third thing is the board was emailed a proposal um, on... Uh, the Wi-Fi at headquarters has been down for about two months now. We asked Sullivan Data to give us a proposal to replace the Wi-Fi. And in their report of the technology at headquarters, they felt that uh, we need a stronger firewall on our uh, internet access. They felt somebody could potentially get into our network. Um, our firewall currently is provided by Westchester County, and we're required to use their router to use their uh, fire RMS service, which we do all our reports and training records on and stuff like that. But uh, Sullivan Data is proposing doing a parallel one so that our network would be separate from the county one um, and therefore it will be stronger. Uh, the proposal gives two options. I think one option is uh, about $12,000 and I think the other one is about $8,000. So I don't know if the board Got a chance to look at that. That was sent out about four or five days ago. Yeah, so $12,015.53 or $8,173.25. The difference is the speed. So if you want everything to be cleared, the more expensive one is going to give you the speed um, that we currently are paying for. And the other one would be a little bit slower. So uh, if they have any questions, that's a Sullivan data recommendation. <laughs> um, so the final thing is the maintenance was done on the gym equipment in January. Uh, Tim just got a proposal for various repairs for the treadmills and stair mills for station one, two, and four. They determined the stair, uh, the stair mill or the treadmill at station five was not worth fixing. It's gonna cost more to fix than the value of the treadmill at this point because it's uh, older. So at a future meeting, I'll ask for a treadmill to be purchased, but I'm not asking for that now. Just asking for the repairs for station one, two, and four to be done. So that's the end of my report. All right. Thank you, Chief. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. You want to deal with these uh, three issues? Yeah. You want to deal with it? Uh... I, I would tell you this. I, I would be happy to give you a motion to uh, accept item 11, uh, item nine, um, I mean, I would even accept item eight. I know we did talk about it last year and it's taken a while to put those quotes together. Um, but if the board wants to hold off on eight, I'll give you a motion to accept uh, the expense for the ES radio maintenance contract of $8,742.48 and the maintenance for the gym equipment of uh, $2,723.05. I would make a motion to accept that. I will. I will second that motion. Uh, Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? Aye. 
Commissioner Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Winter? Aye. All right, so, so basically you, we got the radio maintenance contract. We're going to do the uh, gym equipment maintenance. And uh, now, if, what about the Glen? Do we so both I think as far as Sullivan, I think we can hold off. You know I love a firewall, and I completely agree. Once you're on the county system, you can get into any other company, that any other outfit that's on the county system. There's no question about that. I've seen it done. Uh, a firewall is very important for this district. I have not read the proposal, so I don't feel that it's appropriate to vote on it, but I would definitely look to have that added to the next agenda if we don't have a, a meeting in between our November meeting and get that locked down. Uh, as far as the door uh, training, again, we did talk about as part of the budget. It came at us today. I would defer to the rest of the board. If you want to do it, I'm fine with it. If you want to hold off, I'm fine with it too. Where's it going? Where are you going to? Okay. I, I, I did uh, read it takes like 12 weeks is the turnaround time from ordering it, I thought, or maybe that was just one of the uh, yeah, estimates. I think, I think it would be quicker than that. Yes. Well, maybe. Right. We I mean, I would like to have it when uh, our new uh, probationary firefighters return in December so that they can start working on it. I mean, forcing doors is something that they absolutely have yeah. to learn to do. So, Chief, this piece of equipment will help train firefighters in getting through a door that is obstructed or on the other side is that is it so people understand what it does i mean so, we saw it but yeah so it's uh it's a heavy duty metal door frame with a heavy duty metal door that can be conventionally or with an axe and halogen forced numerous times over and over again uh, so we can teach uh, the, the probies and even the guys you know good practice we don't only get to go to apartment buildings and force doors open you know, right break locks and stuff so this provides practical training yeah. without having to cause damage somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, um, just because you mentioned that, I think that this piece of equipment is very near and dear to me, and I would like the district to have it, because this is the one-year anniversary of the fire that took place at 231 Main Street, and we lost Phil Siciliano in that fire, and he was a dear friend of mine, and I'm a dear friend of the family. And I know that this kind of training is what allowed them to get through that door and uh, I would really support having this on site so that, as you, as Commissioner Roach said, so that the next line of firefighters will come up behind the Cut men and women who are on the first well, now have that to do this and what we're maybe doing save someone. For the last four to seven years, like Joe Biden has been outsourcing your jobs, offshoring your factories, and selling out the amount of All right. So, so well, I will make a motion that we uh, vote to uh, get that forced laundry door. Yeah, that's a six thousand three hundred and fifty dollar tag that includes delivery. I would second your motion. Okay, uh, Commissioner Carlo. Aye. Commissioner Keating. Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Winter. Aye. Okay, very good. It's passed. So you can go out and you can take care of that. Did you hear me? I said yes. I thank you, Dennis. Okay. All right, so now uh, our next uh, topic is the, the, we have to resolve, uh, we had an edit of four minutes and 40 uh, seconds from our uh, September 26th public meeting, and, and I, you know, brought it to council because uh, as soon as I saw it, I, I didn't think it was right. From the, the 3.17, 3 minutes and 17 seconds to about eight minutes was taken out. So uh, our council has uh, recommended. Oh, Peter, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Did, were you ever asked to take anything out of a, a public meeting? No, but what I know is that the public looking at it on TV and not here. Okay. Well, and so, no, you have. You it's, have all right, that's fine. You, you answer my question, that's enough. Uh, we, we do have to tell you, Peter, you're not allowed to ever do this again. You're not allowed to edit public meetings. No Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a take a vote. Uh, this was council's opinion that we, uh, we we put the four minutes back into the meeting and we republish it. And I'd also, when you do that email, I would also put that four minute clip with the full meeting. So if somebody just wants to w watch that five minute part, they can. 
but it should it has to go back in its spot in the meeting, correct? Where's uh, Natalia? She went to Peter. Okay. I don't know if he's talking to us. Yeah, give me a kiss. I'm more dirty. Give me a kiss, quick. Could you please mute your microphone? People kissing their daughters, which is oh wonderful, but please mute your wife microphone. Three and a half minutes of it, and I was very clear. There would be no mistake in what I was saying. Yeah, about 30 seconds, you're right. His, his original question and then uh, a follow-up question. But I think we have to leave it in. We have no choice, Peter. Yeah, we do have to leave it in. All right, so you're going to do that for us, right? Yeah. You're going to, do we have to vote on this or is this just uh, something that we just asked we Peter can. to do? We could put it on the record. Sure. All right, so, so you're going to send another email to the chief so he can send it out to his email blast. You're going to have the complete meeting all with the five minutes taken out, and then you're going to have a set, you know, in the same attachment, you know, the same uh, the five-minute clip also, right? So you'll have the full meeting and the five-minute clip. No, I'm not, I'm not understanding. Uh, Tom is asking that you... I thought he said I had to have everything in there, so that's what I was going to do. Yes. Right, right uh, but for the... What's, what's the the, the other part is the part that has actually been excluded. Tom is asking that you isolate that, and when you repost, when you deliver it, email it back to the chief, you email two. One, the full version, and then also that extra clip. For those that have watched the meeting already in its edited version, can just go back and watch the part that got edited. In, in other words, same email, two attachments. You want me to send you only the edit out uh, Peter, I want you to, the original meeting that you filmed before you took anything out of it, I want you to republish that. And in the same email that you sent to the chief, please put the four minute and 40 second clip in also. In other words, there'll be two attachments to that email. The, ori the original meeting as recorded and the four minute clip that you took out of it. Right. However you do it with the chief. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't know that. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. All right. So, so uh, I don't think we need to vote on that. I think that that was done. Thank you, Peter. And, and, and please, in the future, don't uh, take the liberty to do that. The one that is improper needs to come down. Okay. Yeah, the, the one that had... Right. Right. And, and, and the five-minute clip is just for the people, like yeah, Commissioner not, Keating said, yeah, that if they just want to see what was that taken out. Perfect. But I, I do want to point one thing out. Whoever is moderating the meeting really needs to, in, in my opinion, to be able to see what was taken out. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Peter, you're right, and we're all learning, and yeah, we'll, right. we'll do that. Appreciate it, thank you. We, we, we also ex accept your explanation. We know you tried to do the right thing by Access TV. It, it's just that we cannot do that. Okay. Thank you. Sir. All right. So then the uh, next resolution is to provide 100% transparency in vendor and professional services bids. You know, basically, I think what we're doing is uh, whoever's going out to the bids is making contacts with the people and, and they're discussing things. I'd like the, from the or, all the commissioners and obviously Jamie, the treasurer, has to be included. So if Tim Dalton is, is collecting bids, he, he should do that by, via email with the commissioners included in the email. In other words, so, so the commissioners are seeing the whole process from the very... Uh, 
and, and until that happens, yeah. that, that'll be perfect. But yeah. as we're still bidding. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try and do my best by the time we have our November meeting. I would like the board to, by that time, along with the chief and Jamie, to look over uh, requests for proposals for electrical plumbing, locksmith, HVAC, and information technology. And if I can get masonry on the list as well, I will, but I think that's a good start. It'll be an RFP that should go out from the district and allow Tim and the chief to have a proper list of vendors who are paying prevailing wage to do a lot of these repairs and maintenance routines by just picking up the phone and calling a vendor who's on the list. Obviously, you will not be allowed to call a vendor who's not on the list without getting three quotes. So it would behoove the district to utilize the list of the RFP proposers and just get work done. And couldn't we just email them instead of having a phone call? Have a well, email once we or? have once we have a uh, a list, they can be contacted in whatever way the chief and the board want the maintenance mechanic to do so, for sure. But this will give us a list. There'll be no more quotes. It'll really just be when can you fit us in for this outlet, a locksmith, whatever the case may be. We'll so, have a list of two vendors yep. And they're already been vetted. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they can be because from the anywhere. price has already been established. Basically. Correct. Yeah, the okay. RFP will establish most likely labor per hour. We can't always predict that materials be the same, but we can ask for time and materials and right. see what they come back with. But definitely for hourly wage labors, depending on you know Monday through Friday, eight to five, emergency calls and response. All right. So so any time that the RFPs do not work, I, I would really like to see a lot more transparency that, that the commissioners are included in the entire process of going out to collect bids. At what price point? So like a hundred dollar item. I have to oh no no. So whatever the normal whatever the normal. Yeah, I it's, we'll, we go we'll by the purchasing. We have a we'll purchasing get. agreement. We we do, we're not yeah. we're not doing anything to our purchasing agreement. That still is in effect, so all those I think, numbers. I think what, Mr. what Commissioner Roach is trying to express, we're not gonna change our procurement policy right now, but what he wants is a little bit more of an understanding of the day-to-day -day when people are getting uh, or ask, being requested to provide quotes. It's being done without the board's realizations. This is what he's asking. The board will have to, you know, to discuss it, but that's that's what he's saying. He's not changing the procurement policy. He's actually asking for um, kind of a report that says, hey, we have a repair that's going on, and I'm going to contact electrical vendors to repair it, and I'm going to CC the commissioners at EFD on my correspondence. That's basically Just like when you did the research for all this, uh, the, the door, the, the forcible entry door. Uh, Yep, that's But but we'll be more informed. We'll be more informed. We'll 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 have a greater process and you know, I think it borders on micromanagement a little bit because you have one chief who's the, your management in the department, your only full-time really employee from the management role, and then you have Jamie who's a part-time employee, and that's pretty much the whole deal. So um, you have the maintenance guy as well. So if somebody's going out and they order buying light bulbs, are they supposed to get make sure the commissioners are CC'd on the light bulbs? No. I mean, what, where do they draw the line, or they draw the line themselves as to what is material? Um, I just think it's to me, excessive micromanagement. That's just me. Well, this is why the budget went from $10 million to $18 million under your uh, tutor, you know, while you were uh, a commissioner. I don't, I don't it's because think you, I don't you just think don't pay attention to things. Find, I don't think you'll go through the budget and find malice spending. If, you will not I find may, that. I, I will say I understand uh, both sides on this, but Mr. Roach is only expressing his opinion for uh, larger maintenance issues. Of it's, course. It's, it's about projects and making sure we do receive, hey, here's three quotes from three plumbers, 
fine, these are the three quotes the board is being provided. He's asking for a little bit more of an inside line about the generation of those quotes. We'll, it's, we'll have the conversation offline about it, but that, that's what he's asking. He's not being so in, caught up in the minutia of light bulbs or toilet paper or anything of that. And, and did I hear you correctly in your chief's report saying that the maintenance mechanic will now be giving us a, a daily, you know, not a daily report, but a daily activity yeah, report? Monthly. Yes, I love it. Perfect, thank you. How's Tim right. doing, okay? So, so this is really not anything we need to vote on then? Nope. All right, All right. so now we need to uh, vote to appoint Stephen Slednicks, our uh, temporary FOIL officer, for cur current commissioner's FOIL request. Uh, so I will make that motion. Can I have a second? Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? Aye. Commissioner Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Winter? Abstain. Okay. So that resolution passes. I'll notify Stephen Sledznik uh, tomorrow that he is our temporary FOIL officer for that uh, commissioner's FOIL request. And now we uh, vote to retain our client attorney privileges with our fire district ethics in his duties as FOIL officer and counsel. Uh, so I'll make a motion that we vote to retain our client attorney privileges with the district ethics of counsel. Could I have a second? I'll second. And uh, Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? Aye. Commissioner Winter? Abstain. Commissioner Roach is an aye, and Commissioner uh, Rabin? Aye. So that passes. All right, Fire District Board of Election. Uh, we have to appoint uh, co-election officials and determine, uh, I think we determined the payment schedule already. Uh, so I'm gonna propose that we appoint Hazel Campbell and Elizabeth Fallon, our co-election officials and co-chairman of the fire district election. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? Abstain. Commissioner uh, Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. And uh, Commissioner Winter? I'll abstain, I'm up for election this year. Very good. The, uh, we have two abstentions and, and three ayes, so that carries. All right, uh, we, we have to... Uh, so, Tom, I would say we probably should read the formal resolution for it, and I can read that for you if we should. Okay. So, uh, the formal resolution is where Section 175A of the town law provides for a system a registration for fire district elections, and whereas a register of eligible fire district voters must be prepared prior to the fire district election, and whereas such registers shall be prepared from names of persons who have registered with the Westchester County Board of Elections. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resident electors of the Eastchester Fire District are hereby appointed to constitute the Eastchester Fire District Board of Elections for the 2020 annual fire district election. Co-chairman Hazel Campbell and Liz Fallon, be it further resolved that the fire district's co-chairman of the election be compensated in, in an amount of, what did we say? $25 hour? $25 per hour for their services, that the board of elections be compensated uh, $50 for their, board of elections be compensated in the amount of $50 for their services in preparing the registration records and that the following be appointed as election inspectors at the fire district election to be held on Tuesday, December 8th, 2020. And that's it. That's the formal resolution. That we just passed. Yep. All right. Uh, well, we haven't passed that part yet. We're still talking about this when you're reading it. Um, no, that's not. Passed. But. Uh, Right, are we, are no, we just that reading was the this right for now? for the election inspectors. That was just the full run on of the resolution for the two. Now we have to do a okay. list of inspectors. Do you have that list of inspectors okay. that Hazel sent us? 
Oh, you have it? I have it, yeah. We just put it to record. Okay. Yes. All right, so... Uh, Can I make a comment about the election inspectors? Please. And here's what I think. I think the COVID is really dangerous as you get older. So if you're 90, you have about a 25% chance of, a, of an infection fatality rate. Um, if you're 80, I think it's a 15% chance. If you're 60, Please, I think Dennis, it's, come uh, on, you're at home. We want to get home. But just listen to what I'm saying. A lot of these election inspectors are in their 70s and 80s. I almost think you're better off not having an election this year. Leave the seat blank than having people who are 70 years or 80 years old being election inspectors. All right, that, that's Those good. Those are very, that, very dangerous. We should try to get people under 50, even if it takes more time. But having people who are in their 70s and 80s as election inspectors is really putting them at serious risk. Thank you, Dennis. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to ask them their age. When can I read? You offer them the please. Opportunity. I, I read, can I read the resolution for the? Thank you. Yeah, sure. The County of Westchester Board of Elections has supplied a list of approved election inspectors to utilize the electronic voting machines on election day. The list is on record with the fire district. And be it further resolved that in any case any of the members appointed herein are unable or refuse to assume or perform the duties required of them, the Board of Fire Commissioners or election co-chairman may appoint alternates who are resident electors and reassign locations as needed. So be it resolved that the Board of Fire Commissioners, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, this is something separate. So that was, so the resolution is to accept the uh, annual fire district elections list of inspectors. I would make that motion and look for a second. I will second it and uh, we'll call the roll. Commissioner Keating. Aye. Commissioner uh, Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? No. Commissioner Winter? No. And Commissioner Roach is an aye. So that resolution passes. I would remind the board members that we are required to pass these resolutions every year. And whether or not we choose to change any of the elected processes, we are still required to pass these resolutions and then we are given the flexibility to adjust them. So that's, that's fine that you don't want to vote for inspectors, but you know, we do need to do this. You can remind us every year. I will and we also have to talk paragraph. about polling sites. That's next. Yes. That's next. So we, we have uh, Tucko Community Center. We have Chester Heights Firehouse, right? We're going to use the Chester? Well, that's a board I, discussion. OK. We've not used it, you know. And uh, they're all board discussion. I, I don't think we heard from uh, Gregory Bell. I believe Chester Heights voted in town hall. Correct. That is correct because the floor is not in a condition right. to allow the public in. And we don't have town hall this we year. We do not. So as it stands right now, according to co-chairperson Liz Follin, we have Bronxville Village Hall has said that they would be uh, right allowed to accommodate us. We have Leroy Gregory that says they would be open to accommodating us. Okay. And we have the Tuckahoe Community Center. Um, I will say this. I think that in light of there being a issue with the number of prospective polling agents to be there, uh, the board may, be, may want to consider lessening the number of polling locations to allow that if for any reason we have a shortening of people available to work the polls, they are in a more closer area that they could jump and cover other districts. Now, town hall not being available is a huge, huge thing for our election. Town hall has the largest number of precincts voting for our fire district every year. The most precincts, it covers the south end of East Chester, the Bronxville Manor area, part of the southern area between Bronxville Manor and Chester Heights, and it also covers the center of town. And all the way up to, I believe, uh, California Road. Then after California Road, it is Leroy Gregory. So it, it is going to be a missing piece to this. And although I can understand that the town doesn't want that number of people in there, I don't know how we squeeze those people into Leroy Gregory, because that's an even smaller footprint. My suggestion would be 
to utilize the Tuckahoe Community Center as best as possible. It's in the center of the three of the two villages in the town. It has the best parking, it's handicap accessible, it has the largest room, so it allows for social distancing. And we have to remember that we also have to provide temperature taking uh, apparatus and probably also sign in sheets and whatever. So it does allow us the biggest area to do that. I don't know, I, although I do appreciate Bronxville Village Hall in allowing us to use this building, I don't know how they are going to cover the election in either the main area or this room with people all over. Plus we have pews and whatever else in the way. I don't know how we would do it this year. I, I personally don't think we should allow any more voting in our firehouses. Um, the village of Tuckahoe has been very accommodating. The room is big. I would leave that up for discussion amongst the board members about any other ideas or ways. What about setting up a very large tent, let's say in the center of town? I don't think we could do that because we have election machines that are going to require electricity and we'd have to yeah. then have a generator and everything else. Yeah, I don't. Within, I know it might get costly, but. Right, I don't. And if we have bad weather like we have in many years between snow and sleet, it will probably, and plus we have election inspectors that are gonna have to be outside the whole time. Yeah, no, I know, it's yeah. gonna be town. In December. Yeah, I mean, if we had a, if our voting was in the spring with the school district, then maybe that would make a lot better sense, but that, that's just my idea. But uh, we do have to approve voting locations tonight. Uh, we could approve these three locations and then dial it back after a conversation next month. I wouldn't wanna you know, cut ourselves off from everything, but it's, it's food for thought. Tucko is the biggest spot we have, and so. Yeah, what about approving all locations, and even though we're not, we haven't gotten permission, we can dial back any one of those? Well, we can't approve Town Hall. We know for sure they won't allow us. In case they change their mind. So I guess. I mean, we could, we could do that. I don't know if the law would dictate that we can't adopt a location and then take it away. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a question probably for the state. Um, I don't see there'd be a harm, but we need to adopt polling locations today uh, so that we can then get out the appropriate documentation to the candidates who are preparing to run. Right. right. So we can't just change it on them. They're going to want to probably put together paperwork for the public to see, and we don't want them to say you can vote at town hall when you can't, or that you can't vote at town hall, then all of a sudden the right. people who are coming out are confused. You know, yeah, you're. Yeah, no, I know. So. Does anybody have any other suggestions? Lake Isle. Oh, it's not a bad. No. Um, Lake Isle is well. You wear Lake Isle in the catering. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, we haven't done that, but it would be a pri asking a private business to let us in. So, yeah. You know, well. I think they're doing a lot of renovations on the restaurant too. Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have Tuckahoe Community Center, Bronxville Village Hall, and Gregory. Uh, Leroy Gregory. Leroy we Gregory. can approve those three locations for now and then see if we need to bring it back. My concern is that if we only have a limited number of election inspectors or if we need coverage, they're very spread apart this year, which is fine. It'll just be something that they'll have to champion. So. You want me to, I'll read the resolution with those three locations, unless Perfect. somebody else has something to add to the conversation on the board? You can also, you can also use the station, station one fire headquarters apparatus floor if you just were to clear it out. We have the machine to sanitize it afterwards. However, my concern would be there's no parking and we don't want the public parking on the fire district backyard. And again, I don't want, should there be somebody who for some reason has COVID, now we have it in a firehouse, which is something we're trying to avoid. These other locations are willing to allow us and allow the public to be in it. I think it's, we should take advantage of their generosity. I mean, we are paying for Leroy Gregory, I believe, but still, it's still generous. Well, we should assume, we should assume if 500 people vote, six people will have COVID. Um, because the numbers in New York for the last, call it month, have been solidly 1% and they've been testing 100,000 people. So you can assume out of every 100 people you see walking down the street, one person has COVID. And I think that's pretty much carved in stone. All right, we'll just have to take the appropriate measure. Yeah. People distance. 
Right, read the resolution. Yes, I will get to that right now. We also have to talk about the absentees and such. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Fire Commissioners of the Eastchester Fire District, having heretofore appointed a Board of Elections to comply with the registration and voting procedures set forth in Section 175 and 175-A of the town law, does hereby designate on or about uh, the day of November between uh, the date of time of meeting the Board of Elections. Okay, so on about the 28th day of November 2020, between the hours of 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. as the date and time of the meeting of the Board of Elections to prepare registration rolls for the annual election of the East Chester Fire District. The Fire District election will be held on Tuesday, December 8th, 2020, between the hours of 2 p.m. and 9 p.m. at the following locations or to be amended hereof. Leroy Gregory, American Legion, post number 979, 40 Bell Road, Avenue, Scarsdale. Tucko Community Center, 77 Columbus Avenue, Tuckahoe, New York, Bronxville Village Hall, 200 Pondfield Road, Bronxville, New York. And I would make that motion and ask for a second. I will second and call the roll. Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner in Rabin? Aye. And Commissioner Winters? Abstain. Okay. So we have our uh, election. Uh, polling areas. All right, so make a fire district election candidate petition available October 21st and due November 18th. Only signatures dated from 1021 to 1118 are acceptable. And who's going to accept the petition? Be the chief, uh, well, it would be the chief engineer. Yeah. All right, so the petitions are dropped off at headquarters yeah, and, and the chief will accept the petitions. So I make a motion. Can they be scanned and, e can they be scanned and emailed? No. No, they have to be hard copies submitted to the fire district like every other year. Hard copies submitted to the fire district, Dennis. Okay. Thank Got you. Got it. Uh, so then I'll make this a motion to approve this petition. Because uh, you have people asking for it, correct? And you want our approval before you disseminate it? Yeah, I mean, I would second that. I would second it. All right, so the, the motion has been approved, and so we'll vote. Fire, fire, I mean, Commissioner yes. Keating. Aye. Commissioner Carlo. Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Rabin. Aye. Commissioner Winters. Aye. All right, all ayes. So that passes. So the petition will go out. Now, and who do they email to get those petitions? Chief or Jamie? Commissioners at eastchesterfd.com. Okay, so the public yes. should know to email commissioners at eastchesterfd to get a petition. Yeah, yeah commissioners at eastchesterfd.com. Yeah. It should remain in our network, not in a private email. Okay, okay perfect. All right, uh, discuss whether East Chester Fire District continues its use of a residential list in hiring and starts uh, using the entire Westchester firefighter eligible list when considering hiring new firefighters for East Chester FD. Can I get a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Well, what is it? It's dis to discuss. What are we, what is the motion on? Uh, uh, well. Are you asking for a discussion on the, on the topic? Okay, so we no, 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 so, I just so that's true. Clear. I did call it a discussion, not a, a resolution or anything like that. So, uh, do you have anything to say? No, I mean we've uh, verified that right now the current list that we do have is alive for what another three years, right? Four the years. Twenty twenty three, I suppose. Twenty twenty three. So. Residents um, only. List. Right. There right. was a discussion among some board members of trying to open it up for uh, more diversity and people uh, of uh, men and women from other municipalities having a chance of working for the fire district. Uh, Commissioner Winter has been very vocal about trying to open up this list to outside East Chester. I, I mean, I'll defer to him. He can uh, talk about that. Well, I think I've, I've been on this board for 16 years. Well, this is my 16th year, and I've never interviewed really any any person of color. Um, so, 
Uh, Dennis, right, so the Dennis, this is the third fire time fire. you have repeated that story, and that's not true. Commissioner okay. Rabin and I, I, myself were in a meeting room, in an interview with you, with a person of color. That was 2018. I don't recall that. Okay, well, in any case, yeah. we have no, we have an all-white fire district, and we, I don't recall having a meeting with, with, a, with a, let's say, an African-American, I can tell you that. Well, um, well and you're so, wrong, because it did happen, and you were in that room. Okay, well, well, we'll go back and look at the, the records. But in any case, it's fairly clear we don't have any minorities in the fire department. That's, that is, is as clear as you can make it. And so one of the answers to open that up is when the county does its list, they usually will, well, the testing, I should say, they, and, and the, we should make clear the East Chester Fire District does not run the testing for civil service tests. The East Chester Fire District does not do the marketing. This is all Westchester County and New York State. We get told by Westchester County within usually 20 days of the filing date for the exam. So 20 days before the exams, do, for the filing date of the exam, we get told about it. And it's usually sometime in late December, and you have to have your application in by sometime in January. In that 20-day window is the only marketing that happens for Westchester County. I believe it's designed to favor public employees who have existing jobs, relatives, call it what you want. So I think we should open our list up to the countywide, and therefore we have a better opportunity to get more minorities in the fire service. That's my viewpoint, and that's, you can argue that viewpoint, I, no, I don't think but that's argument. my viewpoint. I, I would agree well, with that 100%. However, then is, oh, we're not able to change the list of what we have right now. Now, a future board in 2023 could certainly elect to do that, uh, but right now there isn't a list that we can modify in any way. Right. So I would say it's well, we good could, to have the discussion, but it's going to be up to a board at that time to make that move. Um, we well, don't... you could do it now tonight, and then the board would have its hands tied. They'd have to go with the countywide list. That list you well, have that's right not now, true at you're all, not going to hire could... any minorities in the next three months. De I Dennis, they could just months. vote. Again. They could re-vote to, to undo what we did. Right. That's true. Th right. They, yeah, that yeah, wouldn't be that. tying anybody's hands. Yeah, it would just be a, an act of futility, really. Tom, Tom it's right. really we, just we, an administrative aspect it's a check mark on one box versus another it's not as if there's a concerted effort by a board i mean it really is just an administrative decision at the time right. would i do i think that greater diversity is better sure do we have a diversified force we do do we have is it incredibly diverse no but we do have people of other backgrounds in our in our department and it would be fine to get more, uh, but again, we're talking about numbers, grades, and that is what we go by. We very rarely get away from a 95. So it's just about test taking. Do we open up the pool to a larger amount of people by going with the counting list? We do, we certainly do. Um, it will be interesting for me to understand exactly how we are able to separate three or 400 people who score 100 when we have a hard enough time getting through 12 as five people plus a chief, that will be a very difficult uh, undertaking. I mean, do you accept 400 resumes and cut the top of them and then the chief is sitting there with a ream of paper and we're going through 400 resumes to do it? Do we do it by alphabetical order? There really isn't any other way to do it. Um, if the board would like to move forward with that, I'm not gonna stand in its way. I just think it's a larger undertaking and it doesn't have to be decided tonight, but I do see the validity of being diverse. Well, I think you would get, if you opened it up to the county, you may get more people who have military backgrounds because those people end up having 110 scores possibly or 105. So we end up with uh, 95 and 100 scorers, but we could end up with 105 and 110 scorers for people who have military backgrounds. And people who have military backgrounds or minorities might show up in the 100 list where we're not seeing them today on a countywide list. So I don't, I think, you know, yeah, if, if, I think if Westchester County ever focused on, 
and the state and Westchester County should focus on it. Why they allow local municipalities to pick lists that don't that end up having you know all white workers is not productive for anyone. They should come by and figure out a new way of doing it. Right. It's just and wrong. How can you? I can't say it any other way. It's wrong. Dennis, well, Dennis, out to other minorities right, who live right, in right. town. Right, right. So Stewart's right. There is you have a better shot. Um, uh, you also need additional help outreach, uh, which is obviously uh, important. We can vote on it tonight. Uh, I'm confused why it hasn't, why it's come up now and not, hasn't been the case for the last 20 years. That's just me. I'm only here for nine months, so I don't know, but we should vote on it. Well, and we should let me reach out to Westchester uh, County. I've made this point to them. Has, well, well, that, well, excuse me, Tom. Sorry. That has nothing to do with Westchester County. This is an issue of East Chester. The commissioners can choose, could have chosen over the last two decades. I think actually, Chief, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Scarsdale pulls from? Scarsdale pulls from the county list. County list. Pulls from the right, county so, list. right, so it could have been done the last two decades. I'm in agreement with you, it should be done. Tom is 100% right, and so is Stu, that it can be changed in 2023 when we actually, when we actually, we, the residents should know that we cannot pull from the county list now because only this year it was chosen, or I guess last year, the end of last year, where it was chosen to continue to be a residence list. I'm not sure why last one. Dennis, were you ever asked which box to check? No. Were you aware that it was that simple? It was just a matter of checking no, the I box? No, I wasn't aware it was a check the box. But in any case, if we want, we can always reach out to the governor and say to the governor, hey, here's our problem. You Maybe you guys in Westchester County or uh, George Latimer and Governor Cuomo can take a look at these municipalities in Westchester County and study the diversity in these small municipalities and see if it makes sense relative to the overall population. It's not a bad thing for the governor and George Latimer to look at to the lower Westchester County outside the cities, because I don't think the city governments have the same problem. And around us, we have Yonkers, Mount Vernon, New Rochelle, White Plains. I think they have, don't have the same issues that these smaller regional, you know, these smaller fire districts have or smaller municipalities have. I think we're too isolated in a sense. Dennis, in the last 20 years, had we chosen to click the box? I have no idea. Well, well, well you can go finish, research it. Let me just finish. Had we chosen, had the board over those last 20 years chosen to click the box, there was no jeopardy of being less diversified, correct? Well, there's a, there's a, no, not being less diversified, that's, that's for right. sure. Because the East Chester Fire District sits within the county as a whole, right? Well, the, no, the West Chester County, I should say that differently. Um, had we gone to a, a countywide list, now, a lot of times in my history on the board, a lot of commissioners are on this board because it's, it's the, the hiring on, his, in, on this board is very important to people. You know, if you, I, I'm not that dug into that the community. Mean? I don't know that many right. people in East Chester from, you know, family lineage and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of commissioners do, and it's a sacred right to them who they're going to hire. And I think that's where you are where you are. And that's just the history of it. You know, people have these histories and lineage, and, and they know everyone, and everyone's connected, and they, you know, and that's just how it works because it's a small are community. You referring to, when you say people, are you referring to the firefighters, or are you referring because no, no, no. I'm saying the the management of the fire department, and we end up with lists in Westchester County. Westchester County is handing us lists. We cannot control that. We can get a countywide list, no, no, but then again, Westchester County not, has to do not, the research. Not, that's, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's not accurate. Accurate. You can control the county what they hand to you right you can well you, you, you can, can because the county you needs to be proactive hold on a second the county I'll needs go, to I, be I the one that's that. proactive i want to answer that that's not accurate you can control what the county hands to you 
You can say to the county, over the last three or four lists, which you know occurred in the last 20 years, you can say residents only, which comes from Bronxville, Tuckahoe, and Eastchester, or you can say county. It's simply the clicking of a button, and that's how you control it. And so I'm not sure the pool that you draw from at the county, but it has to be larger than Eastchester Fire District, which is Bronxville. Correct. Yeah, Correct. So right. So you Correct. do. So that's not accurate. You can control it. It hasn't been well done. you can if if Westchester County just take just take here if Westchester County did proper outreach in the distant in Bronxville East Chester Tuckahoe they did proper training and outreach prior to their exam I mean one year they announced the exam on like December 26th understood. and then Nobody's you had to be in the class by understood. November 20th Nobody's by dis- January 20th understood. so Nobody. if Westchester County went to the high school in Tuckahoe or 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 East Chester, not so much Bronxville, I don't think. But if you went to those two schools, you could find a minority population that you could encourage to take the test and be prepared for it. But that effort has never been made by the county. So or the or so I think that right. like no, so you that's said great. already that, right, and that's great. You'll, you'll reach out to the uh, new commissioner of emergency services, whoever you know it may be when it's announced, and you could take it up with he or she about that. Yeah, and, yeah, and not, we'll that's, support that's, you. And I said we all support. I think that we all support you in that. So sure. right, but the point is, we 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 have isolated ourselves by simply clicking that box. We are she attached means, to this list for the next. Three years. Three, yeah. Where we are with the Chester, Bronxville, and Tuckahoe residents only list. Right. And let somebody in a higher authority decides to set it aside because they think it's unfair. Right. What's, what's the, what was the process over? I know you're just here now, uh, you know, only for a relatively short period in comparison to the last 20 years. What's the process that I'm sure you don't make a determination on who clicks the box? No, I mean, the, the process is simply there's a, there's a civil service form that you fill out when you're requesting a list, and that's, there's a box that's the choice, whether you want the resident list or do you want the open competitive list right. for the county. And you haven't made that determination? No, I, but I, I, mean, I don't ask every single time, but I, when I started, it was we get the resident list, and so that's what we've continued to request. And then once you... That's practice. That's yeah. The, the board and the administration has... That's right. That's right. And then once you hire from that list, you stick with that list. So that's why we're saying we can't make a change until 2023 because we just hired mm-hmm. we earlier this year from that list. list then, if we otherwise, that's right. We can't do that. Unless, unless, like Dennis says, Dennis wants to write to the uh, uh, governor, unless he writes to the governor and says, hey, you need to set this aside. There's nothing we could do with that right now. No, I mean, I, I don't know if you could appeal the civil service. Civil service it doesn't. Law, it would require a lawsuit to get them to change it, which has changed the governor's mind twice in the last four months over COVID. But I don't know if the governor is going to see this through. But to that point, if you receive a countywide list, there are still residents on it. Oh, absolutely. So if a board chooses to pick five residents out of the hundreds or the hundred and tens, that board at whatever time that'll be, because I will not be here, We'll still have the ability to do that because our East Chester, Tucko, and Bronxville people will be on that list. They'll yep. just be one of 300 hundreds rather than one of eight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There, there will still be yeah. residents on that so We're not eliminating the, uh, the ability for boards to hire residents. We're just making the pool larger. Correct. Yeah, that's, yeah. it's a simple... Uh, Which I think is a good way to put it. We're not simple. eliminating, we're increasing... Uh, the applicant pool, you have but it's the same three spots. You have to have on been, average, just by numbers, you have to have had a better shot at reaching more diversity. Sure. Just because, simply based on the fact that the East Chester Fire District sits within the county. Right. But I will say that um, diversity aside, resident versus non-resident to me has always been very important because they know the towns and villages, they've grown up here, they have family here, and a lot of people will look at that and say, well, there's a negative. They're trying to get in, you know, trying to, like, as some people were alluding to, you know, certain hiring practices, but there is a benefit 
to having people from the town work within the town. They know the streets, they know the families, they know the best routes. Sometimes Google Maps or whatever we're using at the time is not the best way. Maybe we know of a road closure that the online GPS that we're using does not know about. I mean, there are a number of benefits to keeping those residents in our, in our ranks. So I would- That's correct. That's correct. All right, so are we moving on? I think so. All right, uh, local 916, any report? Thank you. Could you please use the microphone? <laughs> uh, you know, we, want, we want to hear that loudly. We want to hear that, Steve. Commission, loudly and commissioner's clearly. reports? Any commissioner reports? No. Thank you, Paul. Dennis? No, nothing here. I would like to add, uh, there's been a couple of dis uh, discussions on, I don't know if we put that on the agenda about the health insurance. But I also want to have a, uh, make a motion to, now that we have our five board members here, to take another shot at buyouts. Yeah, certainly. I'd like to make a motion to make buyouts based on based on the criteria. The that previous you set. criteria that was a thousand dollars for every full year of service from anniversary date. So if you started in March of 2018, a full year would be more. Obviously, you didn't, but as an example, March 2018 to March 2019 is a full year. So it is a full calendar year based upon hiring date, not January to December. Uh, that was $1,000 a year uh, for every member who is eligible to retire under the New York State retirement system uh, as of today. And the date on which they would be permitted to retire was not to be after uh, December, would we say, Jamie, was doable? It's a month later now, December 20th, December 15th? Uh, like the 14th or 15th would be the last eight days. Yeah, before the, so let's say December 14th. It would be whatever Friday. Yeah. Can I make a request about that? Huh. I would like to, if you could extend it to the beginning of the year for tax reasons. Because if you get a lump sum, you'll be making less money in the, year, the following year you retire. Yeah. If you take it now, you're going to be hit with taxes. If they could take the benefit in January, It'd be less of a tax burden. But then we're going to be doing 2021 W2s. We want to cut it off before the last payday in 2020, which would be December 14th. I'm just asking. I'm not negotiating. Right. Yeah, right. Steve, it's not a, you know, these, try not to make it a moving target either, because then you won't get the best possible. Uh, I think it would be the 18th. So it would be December 18th. Yeah. So if you'd like to make the motion, I'll second it. I'll make it. Sure. You can call the roll, my friend. Yep. So uh, basically, we are make, Commissioner Keating has made a motion to offer buyouts to all members with over 20 years of service at the thousand dollars of completed years, and it's been service years. and it's been seconded by Commissioners Raven, Commissioner Keating, Aye. Commissioner Carlo, ah uh, no, Commissioner Roach is abstaining, Commissioner uh, Raven. Commissioner Winter? No. Okay, so the buyouts do not pass. All right. Comments from the public? Robert, really quick. I, I just got confused when you, uh, the, the board was talking about the editing of that meeting from, from last week. I just, because the way you read it on the minutes, it looks like you want to vote to edit. I just wanted to clarify, you are not editing anything. You are going to show the whole meeting the way it should have been with, with the oops on the transmission, correct? Mm -hmm. That was your yep. goal? Correct, yep. So we're not editing. Correct. No, no, no. Okay. Well, the yeah. editing was already performed. Okay. We need to put the... You need to restore it. Well, we need to provide the original, and then Mr. Roach has asked for the, edit, the edited portion to be available as a singular file, so that if somebody wants to see specifically okay. what we're repairing, they know that time length. Okay, because again, I was just yeah. worried about the whole foil and in, in things in, in the future. Yeah, you won't have to foil because it's public, out to the public. Okay. There was a consideration, Ray, of editing your portion. 
for a second. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just for a second. Okay. But we accept um, your apology. Now, this last discussion that just went on for the last half hour in regard to the resident rule and the county rule, um, my, my only concern is that um, you still have the civil service law of one and three. Okay, so A, you'd be opening that Pandora's box to try to, to get what you wanted. The goal was to diversify. Okay, so you still have to eliminate the other people that may be qualified in order to try to do that. And I don't know how you could legally do that for your goal. The second thing is, if you now go back and do the appeal process, as was suggested, and bring it up to the governor, you've already hired people off this current list. Right. Which means if you're going to go revert it back to the county list, you've already passed over people on that county That's list correct. who now have the option to sue and sue this municipality, which will cost you more in legal challenges to defend it, your good natured thought, than to wait for the next cycle. We can't do it. Okay. <laughs> but even if the governor makes the mistakes, and he makes mistakes routinely, yeah. if he made that mistake to reopen it. We wouldn't do that. No. We, we've already made it, premised this on simply okay. the next list, because that, that is flown. Two other things, and I brought it up before. I absolutely firmly believe that the position for assistant fire chief should somehow be restored. It's not in this budget line, mm -hmm. but I firmly believe you need to have that because everything you talked about tonight has been a legal issue, okay? And he may be the best line guy out there leading his men, but somebody has to be his backup. And as your treasurer does a wonderful job, she needs a backup because you've gone without a, a secretary since February. Right. So, and whatever the issue is, whether it's personnel, whether you can't agree, that position has to be filled, okay, and has to be filled in this calendar year 2020. Don't put, don't put this other issue in until 2021. It's not fair to the chief. It's not fair to the treasurer. It's not even fair to you guys who actually need stuff that has to be done by somebody else. Thank you. For Ray, that. can I re uh, add something to that? Yeah. So, I had a concern. I'm in agreement with you, and I'm so happy that a resident has come out and actually cares about that. And I'm going to look at it harder and, and harder now. Um, I personally was concerned because the, the position was eliminated, and then shortly after, there was talk about adding it again. So I was concerned about, is it, was it eliminated just simply to remove someone or not? I'm, and that was the concern. Well, so. Again, you're ending the meeting to go back into executive session to talk about personnel. Right, but it's a One specific of the, personnel issue. It can't be about that. That's a public discussion. To, to create the to create the line for uh, to have a conversation about chief? assistant chief is a public discussion. Okay, well, personnel all, issues is for specific personnel. Yeah. Okay. Well, all I ask is that while you're talking about personnel, that comes up in some sort of discussion. Right. So at the next public meeting somebody can be prepared to talk about it, how, how we get it accomplished. I will say that uh, I personally have never been uh, the fan of the way the elimination of the position went down. Mm -hmm. uh, some members of this board have taken some heat as of late as to when meetings are scheduled and when that happens. Uh, for time of day, date of week, I've seen plenty of emails from every shape and form. Uh, you should know that the, I mean, which you probably do because it seems like you're somebody who did their research, the assistant chief position was eliminated at a Friday morning meeting at about 8.30 in July, and not even the full board was present. Um, 2019? 2016. 2016. So uh, that was a conversation that should have taken place at a regular meeting. Uh, the reasons for that at the time, if you watch the video, is for financial reasons. There's a whole resolution read by a former commissioner. That was the justification now. Do I support the creation of an assistant chief? If it's done right, yes. Okay. And if it makes sense for the budget and for the district, yes. But that is why it was eliminated. And commissioners, including myself thereafter, who tried to add some kind of benefit, uh, created an additional captain slot. But it's not the same as assistant chief, it's of not. course. Um, but if that's something that happens and a board wants to put it together, I'd definitely have that conversation. Thank but you. And just for those who don't know, uh, my father was on this department for 35 years, okay, when it was, you know, a 50 50 split between volunteer and paid men and whatever. So, you know, that's why I'm here trying to represent that. Sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your attendance. We yeah, appreciate it. Any other public comments? Other? I would make a motion to 
Go into executive okay, session. Okay, we'll make a motion to close the public session, enter executive session. I'll second it. Commissioner Keating? Aye. Commissioner Carlo? Aye. Commissioner Rabin? Aye. Commissioner Roach is an aye. Commissioner Winter? Aye, and I'll be bailing out here. I don't think I'll make executive session. You guys have a nice night. All right, very good. Stay Thank home. you. You do the same, Dennis. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.